In this section of the review, we will cover immune responses. As we go through these different immune responses, keep in mind that the innate system and the adaptive system don't exist independent of each other. So as we go through, you'll see interaction, you'll see crosstalk between these two. And that's okay. That's how the immune system works. Let's start with the complement system as part of the innate immune response. Remember that complement is a system of proteins that interact to play a role in humoral immunity and inflammation. So there we see interaction already with the adaptive immune response. Complement forms a membrane attack complex that defends against gram-negative bacteria. It can be activated by IgG or IgM in what we call the classic pathway, or it can be activated by molecules on the surface of microbes, especially endotoxin, in the alternative pathway. C3B and IgG are the two primary opsonins in bacterial defense, C3B coming through this complement pathway, and IgG, of course, created by B cells. Both of these very effective opsonins, remember, opsonins referring to the ability to code a bacteria and target it for phagocytosis. C3B also aids in the clearance of immune complexes by activating neutrophils. Decay accelerating factor, or DAF, and C1 esterase inhibitor are two molecules that are produced by our own cells to help prevent complement activation on self cells, for example, red blood cells. So let's go through, looking at the diagram, how these different pathways come together. We'll start with the classic pathway, so we'll start on the bottom of the diagram and work our way up. So with the classic pathway, we form antigen-antibody complexes, meaning that antibodies bind to the surface of something. In this case, we'll say it binds to the surface not of a secreted molecule, but of a bacteria that needs to be destroyed. These antibodies binding to the surface of the bacteria will then flag in complement proteins through F their FC portions. C1 is the first one to come through on the classical pathway. C1 has enzymatic activity, which will then cleave two other complement proteins, C2 and C4. So now we have C1 activating C2 and C4 through cleavage. C2 and C4 come together, bind together to form what we call the C3 convertase, and specifically it's the C4B and 2B subunits. So when C1 cleaves C4 and C2, you get two subunits, A and B. The A, remember, are aqueous, they float away. The B are binding, they bind to the surface of the bacteria or whatever it is that's becoming activated. So here we have C1 cleaving C2 and C4. C4B, C2B bind to the surface of the bacteria and form an enzymatic complex that we call C3 convertase. C2A and C4A will then float away. C4B2B, the C3 convertase, will then attach C3 and cleave it into C3A and C3B. The C3A again floats away. The C3B binds to the surface. Remember we said that C3B can act as an opsonin, so that's function number one. It can also heterotrimerize with the C3 convertase. So now we have C4B, 2B, 3B all together on the surface of the membrane, and that forms a different enzymatic complex that we call C5 convertase. Just like the other convertase, the job of this C5 convertase is to cleave C5. C5 will then separate into 5A and 5B. 5A floats away. 5B embeds itself into the surface of the bacterial membrane. Now 5B has the job of recruiting C6 and C7 and C8. So we get a complex now starting to form with 5B, 6, 7, and 8. Once we have those three, then they recruit a bunch of C9. So C9 is the last protein, and we get several C9s that come together and form a ring which will then insert itself, puncturing the membrane of the bacteria. This whole group, so 5B, 6, 7, 8, and then a ring of 9, is what we call the membrane attack complex. That results in a lysis of the cell and cytotoxicity. This is the effect of complement in being able to destroy a bacteria. So that whole pathway is called the classical pathway. There's another pathway that's very similar called the lectin pathway. The only difference between the lectin and the classical pathways is how they start.
Instead of using C1, the lectin pathway uses a protein called the mannan binding lectin. It's a glycoprotein that recognizes carbohydrates that are found on the surface of microbes. Once it recognizes these, then it uses this lectin-like domain to activate C2 and C4, just like C1 does. And from that point on, the rest of the pathway is the same. We get 4B and 2B coming together, then cleaving C3. Then we get 4B, 2B, 3B heterotrimer, cleaving C5. We get 5B sticking in the membrane, recruiting 6, 7, 8, and then a ring of 9, forming the membrane attack complex. So exactly the same. The only difference is how they start. Now the alternative pathway is a little different. The alternative pathway comes about because of a property of C3. C3 has the ability to auto-catalyze or auto-cleave itself into C3A and C3B. Now, if there's a surface around that doesn't have one of those inhibitor proteins that we talked about earlier, like DAF or C1 inhibitor, esterase inhibitor, or various other inhibitor proteins, then that C3B will stick down into the membrane, and then it will start a different pathway that we call the alternative pathway. The C3B looks for a protein called factor B. And factor B, once it's caught by C3B, will come in and be bound. And then it's cleaved by a different protein called factor D. Now we have in the membrane a C3B and BB. So factor B is cleaved into two subunits, A and B. B subunit A floats off. B subunit B sticks to the membrane, just like in the classical pathway. So we have C3B and factor B, B, stuck in the membrane. That becomes our C3 convertase, just like in the classical pathway. The job of this complex is to cleave C3. So we get more and more C3 cleaved. We get opsonization of the bacteria, and then we get another heterotrimeric complex formed. This time it's 3B, BB, our C3 convertase, with another 3B. That forms our C5 convertase. Once we have C5 convertase, the rest is the same. C5 convertase then cleaves C5 into A and B. A floats off, B sticks to the membrane. 5B recruits 6, 7, and 8, which then adhere to the membrane, and recruit C9, which forms the ring, and you have your MAC complex. So again, the difference in the alternative pathway is through the initiation all the way up to the step of C5. Once you get to that point, it's exactly the same. So alternative, we have 3B, autocatalyzing, binding to the membrane, recruiting factor B, so 3B, then BB, then another 3B, and that's where you get your C5 convertase. So things to remember, things that might help you get through some of the questions about complement. A couple of mnemonics. GM makes classic cars. So remember IgG and IgM can activate the classical pathway. Think about for viral neutralization, C1, C2, C3, C4. Those are involved in being able to neutralize the virus. C3B is involved in opsonization, so remember B binds bacteria. The C3A and C5A subunits, remember we said that they float off. C3A and C5A actually can cause anaphylaxis by recruiting in different cells like basophils and mast cells. So remember the A is involved in anaphylaxis. A couple of other notes, C5A is involved in neutrophil chemotaxis. C5B through C9, remember, causes cytolysis by the MAC complex or membrane attack complex. And let's talk about a couple of deficiencies here. So clinically important deficiencies that we see with the complement pathway. If you have a deficiency of C1 esterase inhibitor, one of those inhibitory proteins, that leads to a condition called hereditary angioedema. People with this condition can get swelling when the complement system is induced or activated swelling in the face, in the hands, and in the feet, often associated with minor trauma like dental procedures. Deficiency in C3 in the C3 protein itself leads to severe recurrent pyogenic sinus and respiratory tract infections. You don't get activation of the complement system and therefore bacteria flourish. Deficiency in C3 also is associated with increased susceptibility to type 3 hypersensitivity reactions. Deficiency in C5 through C8 leads to Neisseria bacteremia. It's associated with Neisserial infections. And deficiency in DAF, or DAF, that other inhibitor, leads to complement-mediated lysis of red blood cells, which then presents itself as paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, or PNH.